Good day students and uh, welcome to this video of study unit 1 of digital systems 1. Now this study unit is all about analog versus digital values and the difference between them. Now we start with analog. Now here we have analog and analog. analog. They are both exactly the same thing, just spelled differently. You can use whichever one you really like. Um, so analog values are continuous values. And this is depicted in this graph. So here we have temperature values. And you can see it is a continuous, smooth flowing graph. So we have all the values taken throughout the day. So I can stress that it's continuous, smooth values. Now in contrast, digital values are discrete values. So this means that we have um, sampled the temperature. In this case, every single hour we've taken a reading of the temperature. So you can see the graph still kind of looks the same, just we have for every hour we have one value, one reading. So this is called digital or discrete values. Um, what's important to note for digital values is um, between the two readings we don't really know what the temperature is. So let's say 3.30, we don't know the temperature, we don't know the temperature between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock, although we can estimate it uh, between these two points. So digital values are discrete values. Um, another example they speak of in the study guide is in terms of watches or clocks. So here we have an analog watch. Um, so here you can see the, the seconds uh, run continuously. And if you look at the digital watch, uh, the digital watch, and yeah, the digital watch, you can see it runs every second. So the sample time for a digital watch, it's every second. But for the analog watch, it runs continuously. So once again, analog watch continuously, digital watch discrete every second. So also connected to um, digital values, we have what we call binary values. So you might have heard about binary. It is a one or zero, a high or a low value. Also later on, we're going to be looking at binary values as true or false. But we'll get into a little bit of detail a little bit later on. So in terms of digital circuits, a one is represented by high voltage and a zero by low voltage. Um, and later on, of course, we're going to use binary values, uh, combine them to represent bigger numbers. So um, here we look at the digital circuit logic levels. So logic levels, we mean the binary values, the true or false conditions. That's logic levels, which we've got logic, true or false, binary values. So in digital circuits, um, a value between a voltage low the minimum and voltage low maximum, if the voltage between that uh, value range, the circuit will see recognize a low value or a binary zero. If the voltage is higher and it's between voltage high minimum and voltage high maximum, the, vo the circuit will recognize a high value or a binary one. Now important to note, if the value is between voltage low max and voltage high minimum, it is in this gray area and it's unacceptable or uncertain. So this means the circuit doesn't know if it's a high or a low and then the circuit doesn't um, react or respond the way it needs to or the way we think it will. So as an example, in this course we're using uh, TTL, or transistor to transistor logic. And for that, the voltage levels are for the low condition, it's between 0 and 0 0.8. So if between these two values, the circuit will recognize a low. And between 2 volts and 5 volts, the circuit will recognize a high. So if the value is between 0 0.8, and 2 volts, it will be in the unacceptable, uncertain condition. Uh, connected to this study unit, we also talk about periodic waveforms or pulse trains, sometimes called. And it's just a series of pulses repeating itself over a set time period. 
The set time period is called the period and it is measured in seconds. So the period is how long um, does it take for one uh, repetition of this wave to complete. So from the start to the end of this wave before it starts repeating itself is called the period. Now frequency is how many times a signal repeats itself in one second and it is measured in hertz. Very important. Um, frequency measured in hertz and period measured in seconds. Now you might remember this from uh, mathematics in high school where we work with sine and cosine waves and the same thing here the period is when the wave starts repeating itself. So here the wave runs and at this point here it repeats itself. It's the exact same as there. And that time it takes to make one full uh, waveform is called the period. And how many of this that period um, repeats itself in one second is called the frequency. Now also importantly uh, we have what we call a duty cycle and it's the ratio between the pulse width i.e. how long the pulse is active for and divided by the period. So this is the um, formula for working our duty cycle and we just times it by 100 to get it to 100%. So, if we want to calculate the characteristics of a period, periodic pulse, we want to work out the frequency, we take 1 over the period, and conversely, if you want to work out the period, it is 1 over frequency. And here is the formula for duty cycle once again. Now, as an example, as in the study guide and in the book, here we have a periodic pulse. So, here the pulse is high for between 0 and 1 second, meaning 1 second, and then low, and then here it starts repeating itself again. So here, from the start, when it is start getting high, till it repeats itself, that is called the period. So whenever this pulse repeats itself, that's the period. And for how long this pulse is high, in this case 1 second, is the pulse width. Now, very importantly, notice this is in this graph we have it as milliseconds. But remember that the SI units in this, these calculations are in seconds, so we have to convert them. So here we want to go work out the frequency. It is one over t, one over period, one over ten milliseconds. But remember, we have to have this in seconds. So converting milliseconds to seconds. You divide it by a thousand as there are a thousand milliseconds in one second. So here we have the converted value which is 0 0.01 second. So 1 divided by this equals 100 Hertz. So this means that this wave repeats itself 100 times a second. And here we work out the duty cycles with the pulse width which we said was 1 second divided by uh, 1 millisecond, sorry, divided by the 10 milliseconds of uh, the period. Now here we don't need to convert as the two units, milliseconds, milliseconds, will cancel out. But if you want to be 100% sure, you convert it to seconds every single time. And then this is 10 seconds, ah, 10%. So this means that the wave is high 10% of the time. So, after every study unit and your study guide, you will see that uh, we have learning outcomes and assessment criteria. So essentially, this is what you need to, uh, the core fundamentals you need to learn from that specific uh, study unit. So here we have define an analog signal, so which we have done. And an analog signal is a continuous signal. Uh, a digital signal is a discrete signal. And the difference between the two is that the analog signal is continuous in nature and the digital signal is discrete so it does certain specific sample time periods and the duty cycle of a pulse we have calculated to work out um, the duty cycle of the pulse and also the frequency of the pulse and that is the end of this video um, if you have any questions uh, 
you can ask me via email and if you want more examples and all that kind of stuff also email that to me okay good luck